Hey the Berries, today's video is sponsored by Porofessor. Porofessor has tons of features that you can use. For example, you can import the best runes for your champion in champion selection. You can easily plan what you want to do, like roaming by identifying the weak links on your team and on the enemy team. Too confident. This player's win rate is lower when playing just after a victory. Oh no, dude. He should lose more games, KW. We lost the last one, so we're fine, right? There's an in-game overlay that helps you track your stats compared to other players, such as CSing, vision score, keeping up in levels. You can download the Professor app for free in the description down below. Hey the berries, welcome to my patch 12.18 support tier list. What we've been doing the past few uh, tier lists, we've been going through the patch notes, um, mainly specifically towards the support stuff. And then we're going to be jumping into the actual tier list itself. Um, this time around, um, this is what I believe from what I've read so far is that this is going to be the patch used at Worlds. Um, they haven't changed too much, but they've definitely made some adjustments to stuff that they don't want to see at Worlds, which you know is going to affect us as support players. Um, Big ones there, as you can probably see on the screen, is the Lulu nerfs are actually pretty huge. Uh, there is a Thrash buff and an Ash buff. The Ash buff does not necessarily affect support too much, but you might start seeing some more Ashes in your solo queue games. And the Thrash buff is kind of like, okay, we'll go through that in, in, well now, I guess. Let's have a little scroll down. So the Ash buff is her Q is actually quite uh, getting a substantial um, percent increase uh, on the max rank. So you can see it goes from uh, 20 at level one to 25, but max rank is 55, which is pretty huge uh, for her auto attacks. Still, she's going to be quite vulnerable, but it does mean that her one on one kind of trades later on into the lane um, is generally going to be, be pretty good. And they mentioned here as well, while Ash has recently gained popularity as support, her power hasn't quite been up the par with other marksmen. We're increasing her damage to help her shine a bit, so it doesn't affect support Ash. Anyway, you still won't be taking a point in Q when you're playing Ash support. Uh, good news anyway, um, Hecarim was my primary ban. I don't know if you guys were copying me in the primary ban, but Hecarim is going, getting nerfed this patch, which thank God he was absolutely broken. Not sure if he's still going to be necessarily ban worthy or not, but uh, I'll probably be banning him for a bit and then maybe moving on Kane as my secondary ban if you are interested in what I ban in Soda Q. Callista, getting nerfed. Uh, Callista wasn't really played much in low elo anyway, um, so that's unranked to, well, I say, when I say low elo, I mean, I don't mean harm by it, uh, but uh, unranked to silver. Uh, in those lower rankings, Callista is generally not played because she's too hard to play. And if there is a Callista in that ELO being played, usually 9 times out of 10, it is a Smurf. I'm talking about Kane. He is also receiving a uh, slight nerf, I believe. Um, so some slight Q scaling decrease. But overall, I don't think it's going to harm him too much. Lee Sin buffs, you might start seeing some Lee Sin in your game soon. Um, but here we go, finally some support stuff. Uh, Lulu, the W polymorph whimsy stuff has been changed. So the movement speed has been flat re reduced by 5%, so from 30 to 25, which is quite a bit. So like Cogmore and Twitch will be a little bit more vulnerable um, when even when they are getting buffed by Lulu. Now, the polymorph portion is probably the biggest thing here. Um, later point scaling is getting dramatically reduced, 0.25 on the polymorph is huge. Um, it was very good at preventing an assassin uh, from getting away, etc. So um, 0.25 seconds can always make all the difference in terms of an assassin. Being able to carry through uh, with what they want to do or getting out. And also on top of that, you've got a cooldown increase on the max rank by two seconds. So I think it's slightly geared still towards high ELO, so like Diamond Plus players. But I'm pretty sure you'll still feel the effect of this if you are playing Lulu in Unranked 2 Plat, which is basically where 
my tier lists are kind of focused, you will notice it if you are playing Lulu a lot. So Lulu already a bit iffy to play in solo queue already in low elo because you can't really trust your AD carries. But this, this is, in my opinion, um, devastating for Lulu. So yeah, we'll see how she does. I don't think she's going to be doing too hot. Uh, Maokai has been severely underperforming, although it's really strange, right? So unfortunately, because I don't get to play um, in unranked to like, for example, silver, um, I've played a few games against Maokai in high elo, like master games. He was absolutely garbage in every single role that he played. In the lower elos, Maokai was actually still performing okay apparently according to some websites so it's a little bit confusing to me to understand why maokai is doing sometimes better in those lower elos not really sure what's going on there um but he is getting adjusted um again um so his passive is getting nerfed by a decent amount particularly on the latest gettings, that's going to be affecting more of like tank Maokai and jungle Maokai. Uh, his Q is getting buffed against jungle mobs, so his jungle clear is going to be quicker. And they have also adjusted his E, which is a nerf to support Maokai really again. I know like people are saying like the E's and the brushes weren't like the main focus of Maokai. I still feel like they were a big portion. So them re reducing the amount of damage that those saplings are doing still. This is still like, this is basically Maokai is getting nerfed again, in my opinion, as support. Or well, he is. Um, but he's getting a buff for the jungle. Um, I'm a bit confused in terms of why they're nerfing his sapling toss and even his passive. I still don't think he was played that much. Um, I think the Q change was ne needed if they wanted him to play jungle because I don't think he was jungle viable, at least in the high ELOs. But as support, he's getting nerfed, so he should still. He be, he's not going to be as good as what he was last patch, and he. I mean, I think it's a double support nerf back to back, in my opinion. But we'll see. Apparently, he's got a couple of bug fixes as well, um, so that might help a tiny bit, but. Overall, generally, as you're seeing a tier list, I don't recommend that you play uh, Maokai anyway. AD Mar uh, Misfortune is slightly getting nerfed. I still think she's going to be pretty strong after this patch, so we'll keep an eye on her. I expect to see more Misfortunes being played in solo queue. Nocturne nerf, a little bit of a weird one. I haven't personally seen too many Nocturnes and, have, and haven't really thought, wow, like Nocturne's broken or anything. Um, let me know in your games. Has Nocturne been strong? Because I, I think Nocturne is definitely more of a low ELO friendly, more friendly champion, as um, people don't seem to get deep wards against the Nocturne to count it as ultimate. Um, but yeah, I don't know. This one's a little bit, a little bit strange to me. This Nocturne enough because it's quite a big one at 0.5 uh, AD loss per level. Uh, I think this is the last uh, support change. We've got Thresh. Uh, he is getting plus 5 HP per level, and his flay is going up quite dramatically uh, on towards those uh, later points. You know, I've only just kind of realized, but um, if you were watching one of my videos about me talking about Riot's balance team, and them not scaling like the later points, I've noticed it on three of the champions they've started to do that. Every single champion that they've adjusted on uh on the point values like it's not escalating as much as i suggested but like the later points are getting dramatically increased so like the base start there is plus 10 but now it's gone up like plus was that 30 on the flay damage we'll revisit but thrash in a second i just want to check um Kind of the same with the Lulu, but the opposite way around. So 0 0.05 on the base, and then 0 0.25 at the end. And the same with like the Ash Q, plus five on base, 
but then plus 15 at the end. I wonder. Tin foil hat time. I'm going to put that on right now. Are they actually taking my advice? Or is that just a coincidence? That's kind of kind of kind of weird, right? Let me know. Stop stop being stealth in the uh, and let me know what you're doing. Are you actually taking my advice? But uh, anyway, flay, max level flay is going to be pretty strong. So you're going to have to choose between maxing Q and maxing E again. Whereas before it was just maxing Q. So if you feel like you're not going to be getting too many hooks or you don't need chain hooks and maybe getting some cheeky damage uh, for the mid game might be better. Then you could easily opt into putting maxing E first. And it makes Stretch one of the most unique support champions as in the fact that each one of his QWE, you could make solid arguments to max any of them in any order really because Lantern's still pretty strong uh, well in high elo at least anyway Lantern's pretty strong probably wouldn't recommend to max Lantern in the uh, lower elos um, but you can definitely make an argument to max or skill point order any of his abilities that was just kind of nuts which you would I think is pretty awesome in the champion how you kind of actually have to think about which one you want to put points in um, just trying to think that the main situations, I guess it would be like champions where there's lots of melee champions, so you're going to be flaying a lot. Um, or the enemy team has a particularly squishy bot lane. So if you land the hook one time, you go in, flay for the extra damage. Could be a good look in terms of, of potentially maxing. Um, I'm sure there'll be some experimentation there, but obviously Thresh, regardless of Thresh's win rate, will go up. Um, but this is mainly... Uh, most likely to be a high yellow buff as opposed to a lower yellow buff. Uh, Nuda is getting changed. I believe it's nerfs. Um, what do they say back up here? I don't really want to go through all of that. Um, adjusted. Whatever the hell that means. Uh, so Nuda has been adjusted um, to something. I don't know if he's going to be better or not, but I'm not a jungle main, so I don't care. Uh, some more support news, uh, which will affect you. So Riot is now changing how solo queue, priority queue works. Um, they accidentally did it last patch. So you may have noticed that if you were playing and signing up a support primary, and then whatever secondary and then you're getting auto filled into another role you're going to start seeing that more often uh riot has decided that support is not as underplayed as it used to be more people playing support basically uh, so you won't be protected as often when playing support so you won't necessarily be guaranteed to play support every single game anymore you may have to learn how to play a different role. How exciting. I know. Can't wait. Not. Um, yeah. That's it really in terms of um, the patch notes. So let's go to the tier list. Um, let's do this. Is that too zooming in? I don't know. I think we'll be okay. So tier 5, I don't think I put... I know I did put some champions in here. I put Vex and Ari down from tier 4 to tier 5. Decided to don't bother playing those champions. Uh, tier 4, we put down... Put down, that sounds quite dramatic. Um, we take them to the farm. <laughs> we put Seraphine down there, and Senna, and Nico, Rakan, and Alistair, actually. The 5, and Lulu. So, these 6 champions here, left to right. Uh, I put in tier 4. I think there is absolutely no point in playing those champions in solo queue. Um, the main, there wasn't too many support changes overall in this patch, but it, a lot of it was just like re-evaluation and can I actually recommend you play these champions in solo queue? No, not, not anymore. Unfortunately, Senna just feels really bad to play at the moment. Um, yeah, I pushed Nico down to tier 4. Like, stats on her are basically non-existent um 
Arkai is still tier 4, I don't think you should be playing it still personally. Um, but I will admit Maokai in terms of win ratio at the moment seems still quite high but I can't pin why and I, I will openly admit Maokai not fully sure exactly um, why I feel like this strongly about where, where he is right now um, but I don't think he is anywhere near as strong as he used to be with the like the AP Maokai stuff. Moving up to tier 3 so we're going to see a lot of um, these tier the the tier three tier two and tier one. There'll be you know fewer champions in. Um, I did move down uh, Zeref and Velkoz. Basically, I've put down a lot of champions. Uh, Zeref and Velkoz are in tier three now. Don't believe I adjusted anything. Rel is just holding on to tier three. I was considering moving her back into tier four, uh, but her gold win rates are going up. Okay. Um, Silver below Rel is a bit iffy to play. Um, everything else there is okay, and Thresh still stays in tier three just because of the Flay buff. But he could easily waddle into tier four still. Uh, don't forget these tier lists are for unranked to lowish plat. Moving up to tier two, we have put down Sona into tier two. Uh, Zillion is an interesting one. I'm going to revisit by him in just a second. Um, Renata, I think, was expected to be nerfed this patch. I'm lucky that I kind of made sure and checked the notes um, before making this tier list because um, I think she was expected to receive a nerf, but she didn't. Um, so she's still strong in tier two. Uh, Nami and Soraka are still doing perfectly fine. And Brand is probably one I should talk about. So Brand, as always, very strong in Iron, uh, Bronze. Silver is when he starts to slip slightly, but still has okay win rates. Gold is where he then, plus is where he starts slipping away. So if you're like in Bronze and you want to play a Mage and you want to, I'd say, play Brand. <laughs> other than that, I'd, I would highly suggest to start thinking about other champions to play. There's one in Tier 1. Um, but don't settle too much onto Brand, but he is very, very good. The only reason why he's still in here is because he's very, very good in unranked iron and bronze and kind of silver. So Zillion is one I wanted to touch on slightly because his win rate is very bad. Okay, so wait, wait for it. Okay, he is very bad in unranked iron and bronze. Silver is when it starts to pick up a bit. And then gold and plat, it's actually, plat is actually where he's highest right now. I think it's like a 52, 53% win rate. He starts to like fare off a little bit around about the 51% mark and diamond plus. But there's one to keep your eye on. Dillian is doing, if you're on the kind of like entering in towards gold and you want to play like an AP mage slash enchanter hybrid, Zillion's actually looking pretty good right now. And a good alternative to Lulu. Um, he kind of does similar-ish type of stuff to, to Lulu. Like he's pretty good against assassins in that regard. Um, as long as you're positioned properly and not getting assassinated yourself. Um, but yeah, he's actually doing pretty well uh, right now. So one to keep your eye on for now. Uh, anything else there to mention? Yeah, I did mention that Sona got dropped down to tier 2. Don't forget all of these champions in tier 2 are generally pretty good. Apart from those like slight you know, the Zillion and the brand things that I mentioned. Tier 1. Um, all of these four champions uh, were still in Tier 1 in the last tier list. Uh, I don't think any of these champions should, should surprise you too much. Zyra, hands down, best consistent mage across every single Elo. Super good. Tarek's still doing well. Janna's still doing well. And Amumu's still doing fantastic if you're looking for a tank. Uh, engaged to learn. Uh, Amumu is doing really, really, really well right now. And those four champions have particularly standout win rates at the moment. Um, but as I said before, the champions in tier two, and even, you know, there's a couple in tier three that will, you know, will be pretty good for you still as well. So don't feel too bad if you play any tier two or tier threes. It's just that the tier one champions right now are looking more, just looking stronger. I don't really know how to add to that. They're just looking very strong at what they do at the moment. Um, I will say potentially expect nerfs in the next couple of patches on those two. 
I'm expecting some Amumu nerfs, if I'm honest. Um, I'm surprised Riot hasn't looked at him. I think the only reason why they might have not touched um, Amumu support is because of Worlds. I think they want to see Amumu support or Amumu played at Worlds. But after Worlds, I can imagine that they would tune him down slightly for uh, solo queue. Um, and then we'll start seeing some slight shifting and stuff there. Uh, but that is your tier list uh, for the 12.18. Oh, the, the patch notes uh, that I do and tier list that I do every couple of weeks helps you out, gives you some direction of what to do into your solo queue games. Um, on Wednesday, I'll be streaming all day, all league. Might do, I've been playing some Omega Strikers, uh, which is kind of a fun little game as well. So I'll be probably playing league or Omega Strikers on the stream on twitch.tv slash Bizzleberry tomorrow. Uh, so if you want to come say hi, ask any questions. I've been playing a lot of Nami at the moment. I'm on 200-ish LP and Master at that moment. Mainly playing Nami on my not streaming EUS account. So that's been pretty fun. So if you want to see some uh, Uwu Fish gameplay, come over and say hi. Other than that, all the best and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.